The world isn't tidy, it's a mess. I don't try to make it neat. Hello photography fans, it's Martin from All About Street Photography channel. And today I would like to talk about an American photographer who shot over 8 million photos during his life. He was said to be one of the greatest documentary photographers of his era and the central photographer of his generation. Let's talk about Gary Vinogrand. Gary Vinogrand was born in the United States, in New York, uh, to the family of European immigrants. His mother made neckties and his father was a leather worker designing leather bags. After his high school graduation, Gary entered uh, the US Army Air Force and when he returned to New York in 1947, he started to study painting and photography. It's interesting how many great photographers uh, who I have talked about previously, for example, Cartier-Bresson or Saul Leiter, had this background in painting. Other than that, he also attended photojournalism classes at the New School for Social Research in New York in 1951. In the 50s and 60s, he worked as freelancing advertisement photographer and photojournalist, but later rejected magazines and moved solely to the world of art. The first mention about his work is from 1955, when he had two of his photographs at the Family of Men exhibition at the Museum of Modern Art in New York, which was a big exhibition bringing together hundreds of images from all over the world. In the form of photo essay, the exhibition celebrated the universal aspects of the human experience. His first solo exhibition was held at the Image Gallery in New York in 1959. He was also awarded uh, by several Guggenheim fellowships which are grants awarded to those who have demonstrated a creative ability in the arts. He was shooting mostly with his Leica M4, 35 and later 28mm lens that allowed him to capture a big portion of the street. But he also sometimes had two cameras, one with a black and white and the other with a color film. Even though we can now say he was a street photojournalist and street photographer, Gary himself hated that label. His first book was actually called uh, The Animals. As a divorced father, he often took his children to the zoo and aquarium. Those photos often represent the connection between humans and animals. It's interesting to see that even in environments like this, there are always possibilities to create art while doing common activities like taking children to the zoo. What I like about this image is this tension of the hand almost touching the elephant. Let's imagine the photo would have been taken a few seconds later. That would have been a completely different photo. His next book, Women Are Beautiful, was not accepted so well. Perhaps it was published uh, during the era of feminist revolution. The photos were labeled as vulgar, sexist or taken in inappropriate positions and also disconnected from the subjects, which some of them really are. Especially nowadays, it's hard to imagine what backlash he would receive after publishing book portraying women like that. But it seems a little hypocritical to me. Isn't it kind of the point of street photography to capture the street from unique perception of the photographer? Now, I mean, within the boundaries of art, it seems the same tension would not be created if someone took pictures of dead bodies, destroyed things or dead people. It's also not like uh, he photoshopped something in to create a scene like this. The scene was already there and he captured it. I mean, it's sometimes hard to use uh, political correctness when judging art. Just a disclaimer, as I was editing the video, I realized I might have not made myself completely clear. 
What I meant was it's hard to judge the photograph when you have some emotional connection with the photograph. As for example, when looking at your holiday photos, uh, you might think a photo looks very beautiful, but someone who had not been there would look at the photo and judge it by the composition, colors and so on. That is why it's usually good not to edit your photographs right after you take them, but let them rest for uh, quite some time before you analyze them. Let me know in the comments what you think about it. During the 70s he was teaching photography. First in New York and later he moved to Chicago. Later he traveled to the south and to the west of the United States photographing social issues of his time. I will leave all links of my sources and more interesting pages and books in descriptions as always. There is also a very good documentary about Gary and it's only five dollars to watch. The documentary goes more in depth than this video with many interviews and analysis of his work. Unfortunately in 1984 Gary Vinogrand was diagnosed with cancer and died very young at the age of 56. A big part of his work was still unprocessed at that time and just to give you an idea he had over 100,000 negatives and over 30,000 35 mm color slides left over. That's why he was also set to be the first digital photographer but shooting film. That can give you an idea how many pictures and how often he shot. I think as photographer he portrayed the streets very realistically, sometimes maybe too realistically, but I think his photos are not only great art, but also an interesting look into the history. I find his photos unstaged and imperfect, and that is what I think street photos should be. That's it for this video. I hope you have learned something new. If you liked the video, feel free to give it a like. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.